So with the local anesthesia, it's always it's also important to aspirate air in between uh, spraying the trachea because if your needle gets caught in the mucous membrane, then you inject <laughs> and paralyze your muscles. You want to measure, yeah. So uh, the PCA is a piece of cake if you use local anesthesia. So uh, without local anesthesia, it's difficult to, to use the straight way. So why should we do uh, PCA, uh, MG, in addition to a TAEG? Because the damages to the different muscles in the larynx, although it's a tiny nerve, uh, and all is very close together, the, the, the damage pattern may look <laughs> very different. And very often, the PCA is damaged to a higher degree than the TA is. And that's why, if you want to fully understand the paralysis in, in a certain patient, go for the PCA as well. So. Um, I prefer the midline approach, uh, as, as we called it in this paper, uh, because it's much less painful if you use uh, local anesthesia and if you spray uh, the subglottic airway with a local anesthetic, then you just go through and puncture the cricoid <clears throat> cartilage, the cricoid plate, and th that's the way how you reach the the PCA, very straight forward in a, in a literal sense. <laughs> and for doing that, one should use a stiffer needle. And I would also recommend for a TAMG to use a stiffer needle because uh, if you have a very weak or soft needle and you, you mean to turn it on the outside, but this doesn't mean that your needle inside does do the same movement if the needle is not strong enough. Yeah, you may bend outside, but your needle may continue the, the old path on the inside. So um, for you to be sure what you're doing, a strong needle is better. Of course, patient comfort is the price. Yeah, if the needle is too, too hefty, you cause more pain, more pain to the patient. Here, a demonstration how we use how we do PCA EMG. We've done all the local local anesthesia. We go in in a very rectangular angle to the skin line, yeah. And if you have a little allowance, you can slightly upward. And if you have a little allowance with the smaller, then you go more horizontal. Yeah, so it's very straightforward. And then, of course, you have to interpret the signals that you find. Yeah, uh, the agonistic signal is the forced in inspiration. So then you get a denser signal, and the antagonistic uh, signal is phonation. There should be, if you have a relaxed phonation, there should be silence or almost silence. There are very few patients uh, which are an uh, exception, but generally there's silence during phonation. And if you have activity like in this, this is pathologic re-innovation. How do you look for pathologic spontaneous activity in the PCA? If there is usually constant activity, you need um, Oh no, let's start the other way around. So the background noise in the PCA is usually more than in the TA because uh, the constr uh, pharyngeal constrictor muscle is very close by. So you get always some background noise uh, from the constrictor pharyngus. And if you make the patient swallow, this background noise you can actually see disappearing, yeah? And that's how it, it, it actually smooths out if you, if the, during the swallow, which makes it sometimes easier to detect small signals. So, but if the PCA is not damaged so much, you cannot, you cannot see the baseline at all during normal respiration. So you need to make them 
phonate to cause the silence, to silence the muscle. And if you make the patient phonate, then you start seeing the baseline, and then you also uh, might be able to identify smaller amplitude signals, which are also sometimes not very easy to discover because they kind of mingle in this background noise. Yeah. But if you know what you look for, you look for some pointy <laughs> curves, then you can identify them usually. The more examples uh, for nation, usually there's silence. In an acute lesion without pathologic re um, there you have, uh, during the agonistic maneuver, very little activity and silence. So this is just background noise. During phonation, if you get pathologic re innovation, then so silence. If you get pathologic re innovation, then you start seeing activity during phonation as well. And sometimes you don't really know what it is. Um, that it's more constant activity during phonation and, uh, and enforced respiration. Um, we sometimes have the feeling, so maybe this is uh, some apparent re uh, which enters the PCA from, from the neighboring muscles. We, but it's very difficult to, to, um, to, uh, to prove that. So, and during a swallow, I think for the PCA, the swallow maneuver is particularly helpful because um, um, if there's a uh, synkinesis, uh, so because uh, you can see small signals because the, the background noise disappears, so you get a smooth out baseline. Often you have a mid swallow burst. I don't know why, but it's it's a very typical finding that right in the middle of a swallow, there's a small burst of activity. And sometimes if there's synkinesis, um, you should be able to see that during a swallow as well. <coughs> so thank you very much.